and welcome back to us. We're back. We are back. We uh, are back in some way. Yes, yes. So uh, we took a break uh, and a baby happened. Yes, it certainly did. And so now we're back and better than ever in pog form. Yes, we are definitely... <gasps> Pogs? We have pogs? We have pogs. <laughs> yes. We have pogs and you don't. Check our merchandise store for TarpCon Pogs 2020. <laughs> so, all right. So, uh, this is a weird part for Danganronpa because we've beaten the second game and there's a bunch of things that happen before the third game happens. Um, it's kind of like Kingdom Hearts in that way. It's a lot like Kingdom oh, Hearts God. in that way, except we can actually understand what's going on. Um, so there's no, I, I've watched so many YouTube videos on here's what happens in Kingdom Hearts. Here's the story. <laughs> I still, I come away understanding less of what's going on. Don't than... get norted kids. Don't get norted. So, uh. <laughs> so, uh, we, you, you probably hear that it sounds a little different right now. We've decided to do, uh, a sit around and watch of the anime of Danganronpa 3, which is the uh, sequel to 1 and 2 that happens before the third game. It's confusing, but trust me, this is the case. But to test it all out and to get one other bit of story out of the way, we're going to have this episode be us discussing uh, the spin-off game, Danganronpa Ultra Despair Girls, which is a real name that they decided to go with. It, so. It's real. It is real. It Well, it it's... I can't say it's inaccurate. <laughs> So, uh, if you'll recall, at the end of the, the last episode of Danganronpa 2, I included some links to a half an hour version and a ten hour version of summaries of that game. I'll, I suppose I'll probably throw those into this description, too. Uh, what did you guys watch? We watched the half hour one because pregnant Audrey could not sit through uh, eight hours of, of, yeah. Well, it also felt it was a you know decent way to go with, like, let's watch the half hour, see if that gets the uh, gets the gist across, and if we, if we want to, like delve deeper we can come back and take another uh, another hack at it we did not feel inclined to <laughs> delve deeper and take another hack at it the uh, uh the the half hour version uh was was certainly sufficient very succinct so yeah. uh so we're gonna just go through the plot of that story kind of discuss uh your thoughts on that see if you have any questions uh and then after this episode which i believe is probably going to be episode zero from here on uh we're going to be airing basically a watch along of Rampa 3 as we record ourselves watching um, mm -hmm. Those episodes, two thirds blind. Yes, kind of like a riff tracks, except for not riff tracks because we are not uh, interfering with that copyright. <laughs> Very, yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, so, all right, Dongan Rampa, Ultra Despair Girls starts uh, in a hotel apartment place. We meet Komaru Naegi, who is Makoto Naegi's sister. If you may recall from that one cutscene where Makoto's family disappears and that couch gets ripped up. And that's how you retcon, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yep. Uh, she's in an apartment. Uh, she's been trapped there for, I want to say, six months? I thought it was like a year and a half. It's been a year and a half since the tragedy happened. Oh. But I, I'm not 100% sure. Oh, Look at yeah, it. Watch the, the video. Time. You'll figure yeah, it out. Yeah. Um, so for she's been there for a, a, a chunk for a of time. Yeah. For uh, long enough to probably go way more insane than yeah. she actually did. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, so there's a rattle at her door, and she thinks maybe she's getting released, but in fact it's a Monokuma robot who claws down the door and tries to kill her. She escapes, and at an elevator in the building meets Byakuya Togami from the 14th Division of the Future Foundation, who destroys That's Monokuma right, robots yes. with yes. a megaphone. And we're thing. now in this really disturbing situation where we're actually enjoying... Biafia. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I'm still very upset about that, to be honest with you. Cause... Yeah. I, the, the, the more we see, the more I feel like I missed something. Uh, that there was, there was some key moment where I was like, oh, oh, now I really do, uh, you know, love Biakia and, and appreciate him and, and think he's... Uh, uh, I think he's clearly a great heroic figure that we should empathize with. I think that... Uh, I, I feel, I feel like I'm constantly having missed that 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 stage. I think that you just really embraced the one percent in your <laughs> voice acting of the. Uh, I, that was how I read it. I was, no, I was... you. I'm not saying you were wrong whatsoever. But uh, in that first, I've gone back and watched a little bit of clips of the anime of the first one. Oh yeah, and like uh, Biakia's voice acting is um, not <laughs> quite so. Yeah, I, I gotta say. Somewhat sympathetic is what you're saying? Is it Pot somewhat sympathetic? Potentially sympathetic. <laughs> oh, okay. Which okay. doesn't really go with the correct reading of the, uh, of, of the yeah, lines. Yeah, you but... read the lines correctly because he okay. is an unrepentant asshole <laughs> with no redeeming qualities. He altered a crime scene for fun. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Just, just to 
Mm. So I yeah, didn't make that up. That you're was starting to feel that, like that was the source material. But we hadn't met Nagito yet at that point. <laughs> that's, so. that's it. Okay, comparatively, <laughs> I could see how like, all right, he's not as bad as certain individuals. Yes. Oh, Nagito. So uh, Byakuya hands Kamaru that uh, megaphone so that she can fend off uh, Monokuma's with a hacking beam. I think they call it. Um, she escapes from sci-fi the, things. Sci-fi things. She escapes from the building. She goes. I, I think to, it was how Mars attacks works. I, I think it was. Uh, oh my god! A record and that's what killed him. Yeah, 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 yeah. God, I haven't watched that in forever. I know. <laughs> We're dating ourselves again. Yeah. Very much. It was in a Super Bowl commercial this year, so it's okay. Um, really? Yeah, no, there was a Super Bowl commercial that was just a bunch of sci-fi things, and one of them was Mars Attacks. It was for it was for Walmart. So. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so she goes across the way to meet another Future Foundation member at a restaurant. She sees a video that's like an emergency broadcast with a bunch of uh, kids who like take over the station and are saying like they are killing all the adults in this place, which I believe is called Toa Island, run by the Toa Corporation. I think something that's right. like that. Yeah, it's yeah it starts with a T, and the island and the corporation are the same thing, and it's yeah yeah. yeah. It suddenly occurs to me: Are these just like, it's kind of like is this Taiwan a giant a anti-capitalist story? Maybe. I mean, the corpor- the the uh, I mean. Uh, the unchecked corporations are really the villains every time. <laughs> so, I, 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 it's late stage capitalism. The, the yeah, real villain it's, in this it's story. late stage capitalism <laughs> and fa- hmm. I gotta rethink this. And now. we and we, we thought it was the patriarchy this whole time. <laughs> well, Maybe it could be both. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it's yeah. a big, it's a series. You can have multiple villains. You can have. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> you can have Ultron and Thanos. <laughs> uh, Kamaro gets in a helicopter, which crashes, uh, and then she is taken captive by the children. Uh, she meets a individual who is only called Servant, who is a white-haired dude with a glove on his hand, uh, who seems we... really into hope. And when we watched this, we groaned a <laughs> yeah, lot. That's fair. That's like, fair. Like, how we will never get away from this asshole. <laughs> never. Uh, Kamaro meets the kids. There's red-haired kid with a bandage on his cheek. Uh, there's kid with leather mask. Uh, there's pink-haired girl. There's a brainy kid with horn hair. And then there's Monica, who is the only kid whose name you need to remember. Uh, and then they say, like, hey, we're going to do a game with you. And they attach a wristband to her and kick her off the plane. Uh, and she falls down to the city where she meets Toko, or actually, I think Genocide Jack at that moment. You know, I yeah. missed Toko, <laughs> which upsets me. I missed Genocide Jack way more than I uh, missed Toko. I'm gonna oh, be honest. Absolutely, with you. yeah, no. yeah, yeah. But uh, um, proving once again, by the way, that by far the creepiest villains that you can come up with are crazed little children. <laughs> I mean. As new parents, how does that make you feel? Um, he's not crazed yet. Yet, yeah. There, we've we've got a couple of years, I think, before he can really start plotting uh, plotting deaths. You say that, but I'm sure there's a horror movie out there about a baby who's gone insane and commits murders. Uh, Rosemary's Baby, maybe. <laughs> Rockabye Deadly? So far, I've got no indication that our parenthood has been uh, directed by Roman Polanski. So <laughs> well, that's good. That's, <laughs> where's my baby? Was I, Roman Polanski? That was him working through his uh, post Manson issues. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So she meets Toko. So she meets Genocide Jack, who kills all the Monokuma robots. Then so, she meets Toko. So for something uh, less uh, dark than Roman Polanski, Toko. <laughs> Toko. <laughs> <laughs> And then Toko's like, hey, I'm here. Uh, Byakia's captured. I need to rescue Byakia. Uh, we're part of the... Because Pia- we're still doing that. Because we're still doing that. Yeah. Uh, she's like an intern of the Future Foundation, and she can join it if she promises not to kill anybody. So she's trying really hard not to kill anybody anymore. Uh, At which point, as a player, you go, oh, yeah, that would have been really helpful. <laughs> <laughs> she can still kill robots, though. Yeah. And no, isn't there, at this point, there's like a little flash scene to like... She and Byakuya, yeah. like she has, she she has like a romantic manga uh, imaginary scene of her and Byakuya having relations. That's right. Yeah, that was a moment <laughs> in time. It, I mean, that's Toko. That's a very Toko thing yeah. to happen. So uh, yeah. So Toko and Kamaro decide they need to get out of the city. They go towards a bridge, uh, where they right. meet. Oh, and they encounter a couple of like kids in Monokuma helmets. Um, who are like, we're creepy, and then they, they walk away from them. Um, and then at the bridge, they meet, uh, I forget his 
name, but his uh, his last name's Asahina, so... Yeah, Hina's little brother. Hina's little brother. That's right. And he's like, I also was captured here, and I also uh, have a wrist thing. Um, and he's like, I'm going to swim to safety. And so he starts swimming away, and, and it then turns he out the Exactly. It turns out uh, that uh, he is the Asahina who's bad at swimming. He's less good at swimming. Yes. Yes. So he blows up, uh, and that's sad. As though Hina hasn't been through enough. <laughs> She's still mourning Sakura at this point. It's true. It's true. So, so he blows up, and they're like, "Well, that's not good." But there's still a subway, so they go to that subway. Um, I think it's at this point that oh, they... right, an actual subway. They order some five dollar foot longs. <laughs> <laughs> they they <laughs> share delicious sandwiches <laughs> as the adults are murdered around them. Well, <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, that game's a little longer than that. Yeah. I think it's. It's more than a, it's longer than a foot long. <laughs> longer than a foot hey. long. Hey. Oh god. So uh, they, it's this been is... two months since I've gotten used to that. Hey, so so uh, they encounter red haired bandage on the face child uh, who fights them with a robot. Um, he has some sort of mental freakout, uh, and then they beat his robot, and then all the other kids in Monokuma helmets like drag him away Ugh. into the depths or something to that effect. Yeah. Now what was his freak out about? They all have really disturbing Yeah, freak they outs. were all abused in some way. I want to say he was like physically abused to be athletic. Um that like he was might basically hit if he wasn't like good enough at sports and things like that. I, I believe that's what uh, it was. That, this, that was one of them, yeah. Is this actually the Breakfast Club? Oh no. Oh. Wait a minute. Uh, you know, it's not not the Breakfast Club. It is not not the Breakfast Club. <laughs> And we're not forgetting about them. So. <laughs> oh, Jesus! Wow. So he he was uh, Emilio Estevez in this equation, wasn't he? I want this to keep going, and I'm also not going to mention that I've never seen The Breakfast Club. So Toko and Kamara, <laughs> they, they get to they get to the subway. Uh, they encounter who they think is a person being beat up, but it's actually a completely white Monokuma robot who's like, "I'm a good robot," and they're like, "I guess." Uh, and then they find like, they're like uh huh <laughs> they're like no really and we're like uh huh yeah uh, they bump they get like a video from the leather mask kid that's like he's made like horrible marionette puppets out of corpses and that's all the, the wheelchair no that's Monica that's the only one who's named oh name. gotcha okay he's got like a leather mask and he's like oh, I'm hideous and that's right uh, most of these kids are in and out and like. 10 minutes or like two minutes in that in that 30 minute video so oh yeah yeah, yeah. um so they find a uh, secret hideaway that's all the adults or all the surviving adults are they meet i forget his name broken arm toa guy uh who is like the son of the guy who is running the megacorp and he's kind of organizing this underground resistance uh when he finds out that kamaro is we can call him po po we'll call him po toa poa toa uh a little bit like Tamatoa. Oh, yeah. Let's watch Moana. <laughs> um, when uh, when he finds out that Toko is a member of the Future Foundation, he kicks them out. Uh, yeah. I think that's when they bump into the mask kid and fight his robot. Might be getting some of this a little scrambled, but they fight his robot. They beat his robot. Uh, the other kids rip off his mask, and it turns out he's gorgeous. Huh? Oh, yeah. but he but he's overwhelmed by like total self-loathing yes and because like yeah, yeah. Because, because basically his i think it was his mom specifically was like you're a hideous child wear this mask i never want to see your face because i think the setup was that the kid reminded the mom of the dad you know i think yeah that, that kind of fits that with judd there. nelson <laughs> oh uh, this breakfast club thing is gonna be perfect we're gonna I literally can see the DVD <laughs> from where I'm sitting, so we're gonna have to fix this at some point. I only see yeah. season one of Lost, but that's because my I probably need new glasses. Yeah, I don't know why they bothered putting that number one on there. Maybe they were planning on making more seasons. <laughs> of Lost. Yeah, I mean it could have been, but <laughs> yeah, uh, it's yeah. a mystery for all times. Yeah. I mean it's not like J.J. Abrams made the uh, he he knew better than to keep going after he'd. You know, done a good setup. He knows what happens if he tries to fill in that setup and then follows up. He ne- it, it's okay. JJ Abrams as good at concluding his stories as he is at starting them. Oh yes, especially when Chris Terrio is involved. <laughs> that was so smart bringing in the Batman versus Superman guy. I watched Batman versus Superman and said, "Let's give this guy another huge franchise to work." I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. We We're all have good. a lot to get out. Listen, this isn't just about Ultra Despair Girls. This is about our own Ultra Despair. <laughs> yes, yeah. It's been two months and a lot has happened <laughs> since then. There's some built-up despair that, uh, that 
Knives Out was really good, though. Oh, I need to see that. Ah, really it's so good. good. I need yeah. to see that. All right, yeah, everyone, really pause this video. Go ahead and see Knives Out and then come back. Please do. All right, so uh, then they go to a place. I don't remember. It's like a tall building. They send a message to the Future Foundation, and they get Makoto. So they talk to Makoto for a little bit. Um, Makoto reveals that the Future Foundation cannot uh, come and help because they're holding Byakuya hostage. Um... And for some reason, they don't want to have Biakia killed. He's probably the finan- like the major financial backer of the or- entire organization. Uh, yeah, yeah. True, uh, but wasn't the Tagami, organi- uh, the Tagami organization driven into the ground? Probably. Like there's nothing but, left? I mean, it's Biakia. He probably had his own stash stored yeah, away. Yeah, he's got somewhere. stuff yeah, yeah, squirreled yeah. away somewhere. Um, and it's, let's see, what else happens? It's... Able to pop up and go like, no, there's really another Togami. And investors are like, yay! <laughs> oh no no we know what's really going on is it's toko's royalties that's <laughs> keeping them afloat that's why they have to make sure she stays around she's a stick around keep and writing other, and the other way Even, for her to stick around is, is for biaki to stick around yeah so. the uh it it Throughout, even in the apocalypse, people want their uh, trashy romances. That's I mean, how like, well, it's especially escaped. in the yeah, apocalypse. Yeah, I mean, huh? Uh, cool. Head cannon accepted. Uh, Toko says she will kill Kamaru if the Future Foundation shows up and Byakuya gets killed. So that yeah. happens. Then they go back to the place where the adults are hanging out, and they accidentally bring all of the Monokumas with them, and the Monokumas attack and kill a bunch of the adults. Um, what did we call, decide to call this guy? The Toa guy with the broken arm? Koa oh. Toa? Koa Toa. No, Poa Toa. Poa Toa. Poa Toa. Yeah. Poa Toa is like, you, this is your fault, and he throws them in makeshift prison. Um, Kamaro gets released like po. by pink-haired girl with a tooth gun? Uh, trust me, that happened. Uh, and so she gets captured by pink-haired girl... Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Toko uh, changes into Genocide Jack and basically cuts her way to freedom. A couple of the Monokuma bear kids give her like all of her scissors and Kamaro's megaphone and all that fun stuff. And she runs to rescue Kamaro from a train where the pink haired girl has like torturing Kamaro. Right. Um, uh, and it's that was one of the scenes that where it was uncomfortably sexual. It's very Japanese. It? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, and then uh, Togo shows up and basically cuts up the train, uh, rescues Kamaro. Um, they fight the pink-haired girl's robots. They beat. They win again, but this time, before the other kids can drag the kid away, um, the Togo actually grabs the pink-haired kid and, kid and is like, "Hey, explain what's going on." Uh, the pink-haired ki- kid, in addition to revealing her tragic backstory, oh, yeah, it was, that yeah, was, that was, that was really one. gross. Not a pleasant one. Um, talks about how uh, basically all of the kids were from like a elementary school for gifted students that is associated with Hope's Peak. Um, That's right, like the feeder school yes. for, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they were all super depressed because of their depressing youths and were going to jump off a roof to kill themselves when who should appear behind them but one Junko Enoshima, uh, who offered them a uh, another option rather than killing themselves, which is let's go kill some adults. And so they did. Yeah. Uh, and so now they're, they're adult killers. Uh, and she talks a little bit about... Um, basically every time one of these kids disappears, the, you also got a scene of like Monica, the green haired girl in the wheel wheelchair, um, manipulating the other kids. And it seems like there's something else up with her. She's working with like a completely black Monokuma called Kurokuma. And they have to see, they seem to have their own plan. That isn't the, we're going to make a paradise for kids after killing all the adults plan. I'm thinking Ali Sheedy for the, uh, girl here. Um, Ali Sheedy or Molly Ringwald? I'm thinking this is Molly Ringwald. I'm thinking the other. I'm thinking Monica's more the Ali Sheedy. Okay, yeah. so Mo- okay, so Molly Ringwald here is what we're working with. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna have to watch this movie before I edit this video. Yeah, probably. Well, <laughs> just when we talk about this, just flash up a uh, picture. <laughs> sure, of, absolutely. Uh, a screen, I'm just, I'm just a gonna screenshot. Put from... a poster of the Breakfast Club and just circle whichever <laughs> one we're currently <laughs> talking about. That's I like fine. that plan. Man. Let's do that one. <laughs> So now we have to hope we land the fifth one. Oh, we're gonna. Yeah. Yeah, because remember, uh, keep going. Keep going. All right. So um, I believe the next thing that happens is that they encounter. Uh, yeah, the 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 devil haired nerd kid um, shows yeah, up and he's landed like, it. I'm landed free- it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'm sick of this. You guys are messing up all of our plans. I just go. So he takes the bracelet off of Kamaro and he's like I'm gonna bring you to a secret tunnel that'll let you leave this island because I just want you to leave because I feel it's like very the end of Portal 2 it's like I can't let you stick around because you're just screwing up my plans my plans will just go better if I just let you go 
Um, so they get attacked by a couple of Monokumas on the way, but eventually they get to like a shrine um, that's got the oh, secret tunnel. Right. And that's when uh, Nagito shows up. Again. Again. Everyone's favorite character. Yeah. And he's all like, hey, this wasn't what we agreed upon. And he's talking to Toko. And I guess he had made a plan with Toko to bring Kamaro back to the base. You know, uh, it's really moments like this that really, like, made us like Toko more. Because when you put her up against Nagito, <laughs> yeah. you're like, you know what? We we did not appreciate you in your time. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, Toko, or more accurately, Genocide Jack, uh, tries to stop Kamaro from going. They have a fight. Uh, eventually Kamaro knocks Toko out. Kamaro's like, no, you absolutely let me win because you want me to escape. Uh, and... It's uh, kind of sweet. It's yeah. kind of a sweet mm-hmm. moment. Yeah. Um, Toko, it, at that point, it's Toko she's talking to. Then she sneezes and Genocide Jack comes out. And Genocide Jack immediately slashes Nagito and says, even though they don't share memories, they do share emotions. And her emotions are telling her that Nagato is bad and Kamaro is good. Uh, and then Kamaro stops her from killing Nagito. Sorry. Mm. Uh, because she had promised to not kill anybody so that she could join the Future Foundation. Yeah, so it's actually kind of the sweet moment where it's a, like, don't do this or you'll never be with Biakia. Yeah. yeah. It's it's again, it's I mean, that's an incredibly fucked up damaging relationship, <laughs> but it's it's still respecting her wishes. K- Kamaro is a real good wingman for Toko. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you really do get that feeling, yeah. Uh so now our group consists of well, it's Kamaro and uh, Toko again. Uh the nerd kids snuck away and uh Nagato's bleeding on the floor. Um so they leave him, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so they go back to... Who wouldn't? <laughs> they, <laughs> if he they, bleeds out, it's not technically <laughs> murder. They go back to where the adults are. They're under attack by Monokumas again. Uh, and this time, Shirokuma, the completely white Monokuma, sacrifices itself by blowing itself up to plug up the hole the Monokumas are coming from, but its head survives. Oh, I forgot uh, to mention, they weird. also... Well, it's weird. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, they, they also bump into uh, Hiro's mom. And Hiro's mom basically hangs out with Shirokuma's head for the rest of the game. Yeah, and you sort of understand how Hiro became Hiro. (laughs) Uh, There's actually, they don't get into this in the 30-minute video, but there's actually a sub-quest in that game where you're collecting, like, dossiers on everyone who was uh, imprisoned in that hotel. And so you learn about all the different figures that's, like... We're being held hostage to manipulate the characters from the first Danganronpa game, which is pretty neat. Okay, I need to look that up. Okay. That, that's worth it. That's worth it, yeah. I'll spoil one. Uh, Celeste's is a cat. Like, Celeste's most beloved individual is a cat. Uh, I, uh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> it works 100%, yeah. It, that's absolutely believable and says good things about Celeste. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, where were we? So, uh, the, the Poetoa, uh, reveals that he has one more trump card, uh, so they drive his radical motorcycle to the factory where the Monokumas are made, uh, and they find that he has made, like, a Godzilla-sized Monokuma that they can use to try to counterattack all the Monokumas and kids in the town. Like a Monokaiju. Like a Monokaiju. Uh, uh, I was gonna go more with a Mr. Stay Puffed. Like a, like a Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. Like a Stay Puffed Marshmallow Kuma. Um... That's where they Don't encounter... tell me you haven't seen Ghostbusters. Or something yeah, of course I've seen Ghostbusters. <laughs> well, of course. With you, there's no of course. Come on. That's, that's come on. There's, there's no of course That's fair. That's you. fair. No, I've seen Ghostbusters probably close to triple digit times because it was the sort of thing that when my, my parents would just let me watch on repeat over and over as a child. Fair. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, let's see what happens. They encounter the, the nerd devil haired kid again and he uh, fights him with their robot. And they beat his him. tragic backstory. Yep. Uh, he was uh, basically given, like, forced to consume drugs and stay awake 24-7 so that he could study and be the best. Anthony he... Michael Hall. Hey. This breakfast club thing is just absolutely working out. Yeah. Uh, what else? I feel like he revealed... Oh, his dad was one of the teachers at the elementary school. He reveals that, too. Mm. Right. Um, I believe... Oh, right. He's going crazy because in the last scene with the, with the kids, Monica basically, like admits like i have zero interest in this paradise for kids i just want to make a new junko um and it's really messed up and disturbing yes yeah. <laughs> yes uh, it was so uh so that happens and then a thing falls on the nerdy kid and everyone's like he's probably okay uh, <laughs> and so yeah yeah and so they get into the giant monokuma and they kind of fight their way back to the adults, and they're like, we're going to counterattack the kids. And at that point, Kamara's like, 
that's maybe not the best idea to start a war with children. And so her, Shirokuma, Toko, and uh, Hiro's mom come up with a plan for them to sneak into the main tower, Toa Tower, I believe it's called, in order to um, take out the controller that's controlling all of the Monokumas that are killing all the people. Yep. Uh, so what, they get... does, uh, what does Peter Parker call those things in um, Spider-Verse? Oh, Aunt Mays. Yeah. No, no, the, <laughs> no. The, um, the, like... Yeah, it's not a dingus, it's, um... Uh, like, it's not a widget, it's... Do doodly? Spider doodly? You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, <laughs> no, he, he has a word for it, and it's... It. It, it's right. like it's a this word right here. Oh, you're looking it up? Okay, I was gonna put it on the screen, uh, but you could look it up. It, it continue. Okay. Look up. Uh, they get to Tower Tower. Um, they uh, it's revealed that the uh, kids wearing the Monokuma ha helmets are being brainwashed by the helmets because of course they are. Yeah. Um, the 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 uh, what's his name? Poetoa po 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 shows up and he's like, yeah. Even with the giant Monokuma, there was just too much out there, so I came to help out. Um, they need, there's a part where they need a retinal scan from the president of the Toa company in order to go up the elevator. And a goober. A goober. Goober. It's a spider goober. Yeah. Uh, they find his dead body in his office and Kamaro has to cut off his head so that they can use, um, his eye to retinal scan the elevator. In a he just real, had to. He just had to. In a really weird scene, she gets possessed by his ghost, who... Uh, t right. it was really weird and really and not ex like there's a part earlier in the game where Kamaro's like I can kind of sense ghosts and it's just played as like a joke and then suddenly <laughs> like, okay, she's possessed she's weird. yeah she's weird it's a quirk uh, and then she she is possessed by this ghost who's like yeah Monica blackmailed me and we were selling weapons both to Junko and to the people fighting ultimate despair so we made a ton of money and that's why my city's okay even though the rest of the world is in bad shape but you have to stop Monica cause she's uh, the worst so. That sounds like we're getting played. <laughs> uh, and this then, is end stage capitalism. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Never trust this, the businessman. This is this yeah. this is actually what they're talking about. Uh, what else happens? They find the pink haired girl being attacked by Monokumas. Pink haired girl, after they save her, is like, "Yeah, I heard uh, Monica say that she wasn't ever actually going to do the kids' paradise plan." Um, and sh Monica has the uh, controller. Uh, I feel like she told some, said something else important, but I don't remember what it was. Anyway, they find Monica's room up a ladder, and it's full of a bunch of Junko pictures, and that's weird. Uh, and then eventually they find Monica, and she... Everything having to do with Junko is weird. <laughs> and Monica reveals that she, like, does a flip out of her uh, upstairs room and reveals that she never needed to be in a wheelchair. She just was in a wheelchair because she got uh, a lot of pity because of it and was able to manipulate people better um i'm not sure the ali sheedy works perfectly for this but it'll do it'll do i i i, I like that it, it, it'll be fine yeah, yeah but the important thing is that they're worshiping her but unlike at the end of uh, danganronpa 2 no one is fucking junko's corpse <laughs> that we know of that we know of yeah um what Ugh. else happens? Uh, Monica reveals that she was the, uh, I guess, robotics president of the Toa company and, like, basically oh, yeah. thought oh, of the right. idea for all of the robots. Um, and her plan is to, like, you know, set the adults and the kids against each other and bring about a new despair. Um, she was the unwanted, I want to say like child of a mistress that the president had right, and yeah. so that's why she was like kind of abused at home but again she sort of like she used that abuse to her own benefit to manipulate people uh and then she also reveals that at the bit when uh, all of the the quote-unquote warriors of hope that they call themselves the kids uh when they were going to jump off the roof she was going to just let them do it and not do it herself well as you do. As you do. Yep. Uh, and then they fight her and her, like, ultra mega robot, and then they beat her, and then Kurokuma explodes, and his head goes flying out the window, uh, and then Monica hands over the controller, and she, uh, Kamaro is like, it's oh, yeah. really weird that you're giving us this controller, and you don't seem to be resisting at all, 
Uh, and at this point in the game, it's not super well revealed, like shown in the 30 minute video because they only have 30 minute videos, but there's like six opportunities you as a player get to destroy that thing. Where like, if you choose not to, like someone in the room will be like, you got it, this, this is what'll happen if you don't destroy that thing. And like every time you're given the choice of destroying it or not, if you say no enough times, eventually the pink haired girl comes in and shows that um, if you destroy the controller, all the Monokuma head helmets will explode, explode and all, all the kids. kids will die. Yeah. Yeah, they they kind of railroad you on that one. Yeah. yeah. Well, but because now the the argument is is like, it, yeah. hey, if you destroy the controller, all the kids are gonna die. If you don't control destroy the controller, all the kids are gonna kill the grown ups. So half of this town is gonna be dead one way or the other, no matter what you do. Um, eh, grown ups can make more kids. Yeah. Uh, so you're saying blow up the kids' heads? <laughs> I'm th I'm thinking if you really were in a situation where you couldn't get out of it, you I mean in order to get your population back up. You'd have to wait a lot longer with the kids. Well, then do again, you need to grow the population that fast? Mm, well, I don't know what's going on in the rest of the world. I mean, this might be one of the few remaining uh, populations where you could actually have a successful enough breeding program that it wouldn't be everybody turning out with 12 toes. All right. So <laughs> they choose not to blow up the kids' heads. <laughs> Um, uh, though, uh, Monica's not, well, I mean, Monica's never really seems upset about anything, so she, uh, brings out a TV and shows Kamaru that, uh, she killed her parents. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And then Kamaru's really upset and is about to break the controller, and Toku, like, knocks it out of her, her hand and, like, jumps over it and won't let her, uh, get to the controller because she's worried that, uh... She's basically worried what will happen to Kamaro if Kamaro allows herself to blow a bunch of kids' heads. And it's, again, yeah. surprisingly sweet. It's, it's mm -hmm. a, Toko has a friend. Oh. Yeah. Toko is growing. Uh, the giant robot Monokuma, Big Bang Monokuma, punches through the window of the building. Mm. Um, Monica's like, well, that's not supposed to happen, and uh, gets crushed by a pile of rubble, paralyzing her for real. Uh... Toko and Kamaro go up to the roof and fight Big Bang Monokuma. They beat it, and it's revealed that the pilot was Shirokuma, the white bear that had been that had blew itself up, though more accurately, its head. Uh, and it's odd. And it's odd. It's yeah. very odd. They go back downstairs, uh, and they're just like, "Hey, um, I'll take." Oh, that's right. I forgot a really important bit. When Toko is protecting the uh, controller from um, uh, Kamaro. Uh, Monica offers Toko the key to save Biakia and says, just give Kamaru the controller and I'll let you have Biakia. And she's like, nope, I want both. Uh, and so uh, after they beat Big, Mom Big Mama Kuma, they grab the key to save Biakia. Uh, and then all of them, like Kamaru, Toko, and Poatoa, just leave Monica there under the rubble and are like, deal with it. <laughs> uh, so... They do that, and then, like, a bajillion post-game cutscenes happen. What is it revealed? Uh, Byaki oh is released. He gets in contact with Makoto. He tells Makoto that Kamaro and Toko are both staying behind in Toa City to try to figure out a way to resolve the issue. The kids don't seem to be attacking anybody anymore, but they still have the helmets on, so um, mm. they're trying to figure out, basically, a way to resolve that. Um, it's shown that uh, Monica was rescued by... Um, uh, uh, Oh, crap, I can't believe I forgot his name. Uh, uh, Nagato. Nagato, Nagato oh, this, thank yeah. you. Nagato. Uh, and Nagato is, basically says that he wants to uh, make Monica into the new Ultimate Despair so that he can defeat the Ultimate Despair and become the Ultimate Hope. Because Nagato. Because Nagato. Uh, and then we see a wheelbarrow with Kurokuma and Shirokuma's head chatting with each other. Uh, and eventually it becomes obvious that they're both just different personalities of the AI Junko. Um, and then two hands plunge down into them and rip out their, like, brain chips, I guess. And it showed to be Izuru Kamakura, who is grabbing those chips to finish off his plan to put the AI Junko into a certain computer system. Um, yep. yep. And, uh, and then that's it. And that's Danganronpa Ultra Despair. I'd, I'd Ultra like Girls. to take a moment here to say that uh, Phil just went through that without any notes. <laughs> <laughs> he I, he had his phone out and I was expecting, you know, he was going to go more through. And, in. No, no. He just rolled with it. I had so, the phone. well done. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Good thank you. job. I had the phone mainly because I wanted to remember everyone's name, but I gave up on that so fast. <laughs> uh, I will also say there's so there's a couple of post credit like still images. Um, the one, the probably the only super important one is it does show all of the kids survived, like 
uh, it shows the other four kids who aren't Monica, like in some sort of lair, making some sort of plot themselves. So The Breakfast Club moves on. They are now the Breakfast yeah, Club. We'll be referring to them as yeah. the Breakfast okay, Club. Okay, so the Breakfast ongoing. Club there. So the things yeah. we need to remember going forward are all of the children from this game are alive, and Toko and uh, Komaru are both still at Toa City. And friends! And friends. All right, any questions about Ultra Despair Girls? Um, none that I think have answers. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> There's that. Um, I'm trying to remember whether or not Toko had any contact with Biakia at the end. I don't believe so. Or at least not that is shown. I'm just, like, fucked up shipping it. If there was and I'm wrong, I'll put up an image right now. I think, well, I, I more ship uh, Biakia and Genocide Jack than I do Biakia and Toko. That's... Okay, I mean, fair, come on. but it's this it's they're the same person. Though. They are the same person, <laughs> but at the same time, you just know that it's genocide jack that Biakia would be super into. <laughs> a serial killer? Why do you would you say that? Uh, I a, a serial killer that could kill him at any moment that he has to like constantly be one step ahead of. I mean, it's so you're right. That's so his <laughs> thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, these aren't well people. <laughs> That's very true. Speaking yeah. of not well people, well, we, on our next episode, we'll start watching Danganronpa 3, the anime. Um, we'll be watching the Blu-ray version. If you'd like to watch along with us, uh, I know that there are Blu-rays and DVDs of it available. I believe you can stream it from Funimation's website. And sure. I'm sure there are other ways of watching that anime. Totally legal ways. Sure. Yeah. Like being in Korea. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the South Korea, not the North Korea. Please don't. Please don't go to North Korea. <laughs> Nothing good comes of that. 